Hello everybody, it's SOD Madhaven here today, and we're going to be taking a look at the Tier 9 Progetto C50 Mod 66. These Italians and their names, they are massive, tremendous, just wow, brain farts and pain. <laughs> okay, but for starters, um, the rework that has been done to this tank, it has finally brought this tank into the competitive... Uh, it, it's, it's finally competitive. Beforehand, um... This was actually the tank I bought out of the line because I was really looking forward to playing the Tier 9. Uh, it's got a good turret. It's not the most reliable turret, but it's a good turret. Combined with the mobility and the way that the gun handles right now, this tank is actually performing a lot better than it was a week ago. That's for sure with this uh, most recent rework. So we're going to make today a little bit quicker. I know yesterday on the uh, Progetto 54, we took a little bit longer on it because, yeah, it, it was it sucked. Not gonna lie, like, the accuracy debuffs, the aim time increase, they made it very difficult to play those games. Well, yeah, play that tank and play them in the game. Um, so starting off, the reload times for the first gun, so like, if whenever you first get the uh, Progetto 66 and you get your stock gun, um, now that I think about it, the stock gun itself, there was no penetration reworks on this gun. Uh, it has 220, 242, and then 105. But they bumped its reload times, which, I mean, when are we doing 320 damage, if you had a 15.2 second reload and you're only doing 320 damage a shot, you, you're going to get outmatched by tier 8s left and right with trading. So, that 12 seconds, uh, actually, you know what? Um, let's take a look at what the reloads are currently in the game. So, we have... Reload time, 6.42, 8.02, and then 10.16. This is with a fully trained crew, 9 perks. Uh, but then you also have to mention the interclip reload. So with the clip reload, you actually have to add that to the shells themselves. So you're looking at a 9.42, 11.02, and then a 13.16 on your reload times. I would like to see them change that to where it's... Um, if you didn't fire the shell prior, there should be no initial clip reload because you never fired your gun why do you need to load in the next shell into the chamber i mean it's an automatic system that's going to swap the shell over the second you place it it should have already been swapped to begin with because you're placing it on a rack so you're placing it in the second spot which means that there's no initial clip reload for the safety yeah it's <laughs> brain hurts it's the reload mechanic that they should have added to the game but they didn't do it um, okay, so no change in the accuracy for the stock gun. They did, however, increase the aim time from 2.4 to 2.8, so another debuff. Uh, sure, these tanks got a buff, but they also got debuffed through the roof. Along with that, with the upgraded version, with the uh, 76, and then the reload time increase. Uh, what does kind of suck, though, is they made the first shell take longer to load by quite a bit but then they bumped the last two shells so from 17.2 to 20 seconds it, it's still counterintuitive because all they did was is take the reload time from these two and then put it onto the last shell and then increase the reload of the first two rounds so technically your reload is still exactly the same it's just those last two shells load faster and your first shell takes longer um in my opinion a five second difference in loading a gun makes no sense whenever it's like that this should have been 17.5 seconds overall but speaking of which this is also something that should have not even touched the 20 seconds should have been the fourth shell and then having the next shell load in 17 seconds so they removed the shell from this gun which is coming further down after well hold on and then on turret 2 aim time still a debuff accuracy gets a little bit of an improvement to 0.37 uh reload pretty much just gets a one second increase on the first two shells your last cell is still taking 12 seconds and then with the 76 change change to three rounds like the stock turret and all other guns on the heavy line this reduces the time to refit by 28.2 seconds but the thing is you removed a feature of a gun that a lot of people were looking forward to using I was looking forward to using the 105 with the four shots on this tank consistently. 
because it's a four shot auto loader, a four shot true auto loader. You know, it's not like I have to clip out four shots and sit there and reload my entire magazine. It's I fire one, I reload, I fire one, I reload, I fire two. And all of a sudden now he's a two shot. I have two more shells in the magazine. Guess what? I'm going to clip out that person. I'm going to be okay with that. And then I'm going to suffer by sacrificing a massive amount of DPM. But the thing is, I have a 1280 clip potential, which is just amazing to have that much potential inside your gun, especially if you can control your output in that you know limited amount of time. It's going to take you nine seconds to clip them out. But the fact is, in that nine seconds, you're delivering 1200 damage. It like... I I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they would remove a feature from a tank and then, you know, be like, it makes it reload faster. I mean, don't get me wrong. This 40 seconds right here did kind of suck with it at first. But they could have just left this the way it was with this shell. Drop this one down to like 16. Drop this one down to like 14.5 or maybe even 13 seconds and then had the final shell load in at 12. And then I would have been totally fine with that, having a four-shot auto alert. But... Yeah. However, they did change the aim time from 3.1 to 2.7, probably the first aim time buff we've seen. Uh, but they did decrease the accuracy by 0 0.03. So it kind of counteracts it. Honestly, though, I do prefer the better aim time over the accuracy. But then uh, clip count from 4 to 3. Yeah, that sucks. And then one thing that made no sense to me why they did it was to, they lowered its penetration down to 242, which was what the final gun had. And then they gave the final gun, the 120, the 258 standard pin. When this tank has been like this the entire time of 242 standard pin. And I thought 242 was totally fine. But they want people to use the final gun. And they're basically treating all these previous weapons like a stepping stone that you don't ever want to use. In my opinion, that's wrong. Because this previous gun, the 76, the 105-76 is not a stepping stone. This should have been another competitive weapon. Um, the reason why I'm sharing this is because I've been using the 105 and struggling with it, really struggling with it. The reload times between the 120 and the 105 is in the range of a quarter of a second. So basically you're upgrading your, you're upgrading your damage for the same reload once you jump up to the next gun because it goes 19, 17.5 and then 16 but once you start to actually think about the initial clip like the interclip reload adding that all in this is actually an eight second reload so you have 11 seconds and then you have nine seconds in the first one but the damage difference is tremendous um aim time from 2.7 to 2.6 and then no change on the accuracy as well so the final gun is literally the gun that they want you to keep because no accuracy change and better aim time um, and then they did a little bit of a vehicle movement, which this right here is confusing because it doesn't specify what it is. It's just vehicle movement 0.24 to 0.28. So to me, whenever I read 0.24 to 0.28, the only thing that comes to mind is accuracy during vehicle movement, accuracy during vehicle rotation um, from from chassis one. So this is with your tracks. From 0.24 to 0.28. So they did decrease your vehicle. Um, it's going to make your bloom pop out a lot more. However, they did give it a reverse speed buff from 12 to 15. Which is actually kind of a nice change in all of these tanks. Because it allows you to be able to back down off the hill a lot faster. Now, jumping over to the actual statistics of the vehicle. For the uh, Progetto 66. Um, st standard view range at 370. You know. Hit point 1,750 stock. Still concealment. You're not going to be concealed inside this. Let's go ahead and bump everything up on this real fast and then head back up to the top here. So let's actually put the 105. 242 pin, 281, 105. Along with that, I do believe your standard rounds travel at like 1,160-something with the uh, 105. I am actually double-checking. 1,147, and then your premiums are 1,386. And then your high explosives travel at 827. So, but 320 alpha, and then coming down. Um, yeah, aim time 2.8 seconds. They just made this gun a lot harder to use, even though it's a smaller gun. 
So it does kind of suck. But with the final turret on the tank, you're going to get 390 view range. That's going to be really nice to have. You're going to be able to get up to the range of maybe 500 meters to 498 or 92-ish if you guys are running a full-on view range. 1,850 hit points. You are going to be able to trade quite a bit, except for Tarans, which are going to two-shot you still. They two-shot everything. And then uh, 250 at standard, 303 uh, premium, 120 on the high explosives. And along with that, jumping up to the final gun real fast, your shell velocity with this tank, you're looking at 1,075 on your standards. You're looking at 902 on your premium, and they are heat rounds, keep in mind. And then 902 on your high explosives with a 550 alpha, well, 515 alpha on those high explosives. So if you can get these to pin, they're actually pretty nice. I've gotten a few of them to pin. But with the standard and then the um, heat rounds, I really do enjoy the fact that this thing does have heat rounds. Um, and also, just a heads up, the way I counteracted the uh, penetration debuff on ah, on the uh, Progetto 66s, I loaded nothing but premium. No regrets. And I still struggle inside of it. I was, I was getting 3,000 damage games back to back, but just the fact that your reload is almost the same as the 120 it just it, it's a it's a better choice to use the 120 rather than the 105 so rather than giving this tank diversity and making it more competitive with both guns it's only competitive with one gun which is a little sad to see so along with that aim time at 2.6 three shots per clip initial clip reload 3.5 seconds and then the sh auto loading time um thing is with the projecto 66 this does kind of hinder it at 16 seconds because you have the M103, you have the Conqueror, you have the Concept 1B. For crying out loud, you have the AE Phase 1, which is out-damaging this per minute. You even have the French Tier 9 that has a better reload with the same alpha and more armor and not as much mobility, but it is what it is. And then 36-round capacity. Um, I kind of do find myself running out of ammunition in this thing quite a bit, not going to lie. And then once you hit those last three shells, you kind of have to spend them all and then swap rounds. If you don't, then you find yourself just stuck with two shells or one shell in the clip, and then you're swapping over to your next round. I would like to see it to where it kind of like starts to throw in the premium rounds because that's all that they have left. So the first shell you fire is your last standard, and then you're going to have two premium rounds loaded inside the clip as well. That would have been nice to see, but I doubt they're going to do it. Nine degrees of gun depression, 20 degrees of elevation. So it's going to be able to work a ridge line, have some fun with that. Not many problems. 195 on the frontal armor of the turret, 105 on the side of the turret, and then 105 on the rear of the turret. 25 degrees of turret rotation, 390 view range. I already went over that. But the turret, it does feel comfortable. That 195, your gun mantle on the tank, you're looking at 275 to about, yeah, there are a couple of weak spots standard runs. We'll be able to pin on this turret, even whenever it's hauled down. Heat rounds higher up in the gun mantle. We'll be able to go through or a... Higher penetration APCR rounds. Uh, engine power at 690, giving a uh, 13.79 horsepower to ton. And then if you want to run power terrain on this and drop the ventilation, uh, this does jump up into the range of 14.4. So it's it's not that bad of an increase. It's actually pretty nice. 45 top speed, 15 reverse. And then even better, from the tier 8 to the tier 10, you go from a 12% fire chance to a 10% fire chance. Kind of a nice improvement. Uh, 28 degrees uh, per second rotation on the tracks, 1.1 hard, 1.2 medium, 2.3 on soft. Honestly, this tank, it doesn't seem like it's going to need off-road driving, but if you take it, if you do end up on those soft terrains, you'll find yourself just mowing through it. Other than that, your hard and your medium will be taken care of by bore and leader, so you don't get to really worry about that too much. More than likely, you're going to be looking at a standard terrain resistance of brain fart. Hold on. Of brain fart. Did they remove it? Am I blind or did they remove it from end game? It used to be on the top right. Detectability. View range. Signal range. Oh, it's dead center now. Yeah, they did move it. So with Born Leader, um, speaking of which, this crew, I do believe they do have off road driving on them right now. They do. They have off road driving and Born Leader. So if you throw that on, uh, they moved it on me. You're, you go from 2.3 to 1.69 for soft, and then 0.98 for medium, and then um, firm terrain, so your hard terrain, to 0.99. Um, it's kind of crazy to think that with all the statistic buffs that we have, your medium terrain, if it's low enough, is always better than your hard terrain. 
um, there's a lot of percentages going on, and I don't think they really thought it through on how they should handle that. So it's actually a little bit funny. So with 195, the 195 on your tank is actually just this one spot on the frontal armor of your turret, and then it jumps to the 150 on your side cheeks. You have 40, 52, meter, 52 millimeters on your top plate. That's going to be nice, because that's going to be able to bounce to ran. Uh, auto bounce. Your hull armor, though, you got 130. It jumps down to 120 on the further out. And whenever you're flat on facing your opponent directly, you will find that your hull armor is not going to be holding up. But the second you max out your gun depression, that's the way this tank wants to be played. It wants to be consistently hauled down and always utilizing that gun depression, the same way as the tier 8. But the tier 8 kind of has that more of a... um triangle shaped turret which makes it to where like if it is not using gun depression it still has that additional angle on top of the turret to be able to bounce shells consistently it, this thing also suffers from the under armor at 30 millimeters 25 millimeters all the way on the bottom so keep that in mind if you are not ready for this tank and you think about it, you get stuck up, you have to kind of prompt yourself up, and part of your tank's exposed on the side. All you have to really do is just aim at the side to be able to penetrate this, but if they're flat on land, you can essentially aim anywhere around the uh, hull armor if they are flat down, because you're going to be pinning it anywhere. Uh, with the lower plate being 100 millimeters as well, you can actually do some really cheeky um, corner pulls with this thing. It doesn't have any slants in the bottom they are poking out, so essentially you are safe to uh, overextend a tad bit to bait some shells. Uh, but I have kind of overbaited and been pinned up here by people that are um, loading heat rounds without a problem. But your lower armor, super effective, really hard to go through. And then we still had that uh, small gun. Big gun, there we go. 303 heat pin, yeah, effective armor in the range of 500, 600. You're going to be fine. You want to pull around. Along with that, it's side armor. We're looking at 70 millimeters on both the top and bottom. So you are going to be able to um, side scrape inside this tank. Reverse side scraping, preferably, so you don't overexpose your... 120 millimeter side plate up in the front but primarily the back of the turret 30 millimeters top armor 30 millimeters artillery is gonna freaking hurt i'm gonna tell you guys now i've been hit by artillery a couple of times in this tank and oh boy 1400 hit points lost instantly died lots of fun so yeah as uh, time goes on i'll do a bigger and better review of these tanks um Currently, this is just going over the patch notes and everything that's been changed on these. Uh, none of these tanks I have more than, I think, maybe 30 matches played inside of them, except for the uh, Tier 8 Premium, which the Tier 8 Premium, I'm pretty sure I have in the range of, like, 70-plus matches played. Because I try to pull it out, I try to get better with it, but the fact is, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I've tried so hard to play that tank, but I'm just struggling with it. So... Uh, these matches are actually in reverse, keep in mind, so you're going to be seeing these matches in reverse. To give you guys an idea, uh, the Progetto C55 Mod 54, I only have 5 matches played. Uh, the Progetto 66, I have 12 matches played. The Rasarante, I have 18 matches played. And the Basante, I got 68 matches played. So, yeah, I just, these tanks, for me, they were underperforming. I didn't want to play them because they just, they didn't feel good to play. Um, trying to jump in them they kind of made me feel like I would be better off just ignoring them in all honesty which is just kind of crazy to say because whenever they first dropped everyone's hype was up I spent money to get these I free xp'd them all because I wanted to get reviews out on them as quick as possible and then I started to play them and rather than reviewing them I just told everyone they're not even worth your time because they weren't even right now with this reloads and all the improvements that they've done to these tanks um, the tier 9 is probably the one that, to me, stands out the most inside the entire lineup. Just because you have a couple more rounds of ammunition than the tier 10. And along with that, you're a little bit more mobile than the tier 10, even though the tier 10 has better power to weight. So, with the way that these tanks are lined up right now, um, they still need a little bit more work. I don't know why they just hammered down the aim time because a lot of people were taking their time to aim their shells prior and then they just hammered them down but even with the standard rounds the i i guess the 242 to 258 was a decent buff but removing the 258 penetration from the previous gun on the 76 which is still considered a tier 9 weapon for me is kind of just an absolute letdown that they would do that and just removing a competitive gun. 
Um, they've done it to a couple of tanks, outright removing guns and taking away variety from the game. And then making it seem like everything's just a straight path. This is the gun that you want. This is the gun that you're going to get. And this is what we want you to use. There's only one gun for this tank. Because it, it, from my point of view, they're just lazy and probably don't want to balance out multiple guns and have multiple competitive guns on tanks for multiple things to balance out. I, I think it's just a lazy way of development. I mean, look at Call of Duty. They have hundreds of guns, hundreds of attachments, and they've balanced them all out to be competitive on every single weapon. You know, it's not like you just get one setup style and you play. If it was like that in Call of Duty, no one would play it because it wouldn't feel different. Um, same thing about World of Tanks. We need a little bit more variety. We need, like, at least two competitive guns per tank, depending on the tank. You know, for instance, like the E5, it has one competitive gun, and it's known to have one competitive gun, so it has one competitive gun. Um, the E100 has two competitive guns, but without the equipment swap ability, it does kind of slow us down a tad bit in being able to, um, want- I actually wonder- I actually want to jump back a little bit, because I do remember this. I waited to load, and right there, if you guys noticed, I shot at literally 0 0.1, and I didn't get my second shell loaded, which means I waited all that extra time, and I rushed my shot by half a second too much, or even 0 0.1 too much, and I never got my second shell loaded. Also, against the T-32 right here, I would like someone's opinion. Did that go through the tank? Did that shell just outright go through the T-32? Um, I had a couple of shells today as well. One inside the Rosarante that I watched my shell just outright go through a 4005. Um, I do believe that ghost shells are back in the game. And it's only on the Italians that I'm experiencing it on. So, if you guys are experiencing ghost shells, please let me know. Uh, this is something that needs to be solved very fast because Blade's apparently been experiencing it as well. He had four in a row the other day. And, yeah, um, they did something and ghost shells are back. So keep that in mind if you guys are having shells going through stuff. Like, I'm not 100% sure if it is, but I've seen a couple of them. It does feel like it. So, I, I'm, I think it's time for us to go jump over on the... Well, the, the Watt Discord, because the forums are shut down now, and alert them that ghost shells are back. Because I've been watching a few of my shells outright just go through tanks on shots that should have been penetrations. So, there's that. Oh, and Tehran! Um, I was actually in the Watt Discord the other day, and I was chit-chatting with a couple of people. I mentioned that rather than releasing a tank and then giving the content creators a month rental the day that they release the tank, they should release the tank in the game like two weeks early and allow content creators to record and play with it and help with balance readjustments and then like three days before it's finalized to actually readjust the tank correctly that way we know if it's overpowered. Um, for instance, Vishaw is now a CC. I find Vishaw to be an absolutely fantastic player and he's someone I look up to whenever it comes down to this game because he's just outstanding individual. He is a fantastic person. And if, if personally, if he was testing a tank and he's saying it's broken, it's broken. You know, like I, I would take his word for it. It's broken. Um, so hopefully, you know, we can try and get it to where the devs are actually paying attention rather than just thinking that this is going to be a great idea to do and doing it the way that they want to do it when in fact that's not the right way to do it because to find out they were thinking about the grill 15 why would people want to play the Tehran over any other tank in the game well I'll, I'll tell you why I would play the Tehran it's got Vanguard concealment and it's a tank destroyer that's the entire reason why you know I, like, I don't care if I had an extra 100 damage and the same reload as a version 5, even without ventilation. You guys, you know, it, it's got a faster reload than the version 5 with the full setup. And there, there's the artillery. There's 900 hit points. But, um... It's just... There's a lot to it. And eye for an eye. Perfect. Love it. Turan, eye for an eye. Totally happy about that. 
He does uh, he does 16 damage. I do 200 damage. Eye for an eye. Nice. And, you know, the way I look at it is we have all these content creators in the game that are good players. We got Petty360, Slap a Fish, he's a Muppet, but he could be a good player. Uh, sorry, Slap, had to. I'm going to throw it out there. Get good. And then we have, um, yeah, I'm not going to mention that guy. Uh, there, there's a lot of them. And there's a lot of good players out there. And I, I think that they should be taking their feedback into consideration on a tank before actually releasing it. That way, we don't release a tank that's broken. And now Wargaming doesn't want to go against their terms of service and debuff it. Because the fact is, they should have debuffed the tank the same day it came out. That way, everyone who bought it right then and there, you just refund all those players and ask them, if you guys want to buy the tank, you can buy the tank again. Sorry, we released it like this, you know. And that way, you know, because now it's already been two weeks almost that the tank's been out, or a week that the tank's been out. And a lot more people has bought the tank because of reviewers like me, um, matches that Vishai has shown off, matches that other people have shown off. A lot of people have already bought the tank. And now refunding it, it's like there's already a large amount of people who had the tank now. And refunding it is going to be a big drawback on them. They should have debuffed it the first day that it released, saying that this is a premature re release. But now it's stuck in the game like that. And if they ever take it out of the game, they're in trouble. Because they're going to have to refund a lot of people now. And in my opinion, it's greed. You know, it's, it's greed. I, I would actually just debuff the tank and accept the fact that people are going to be angry and refund them. Because I'd be like, I don't want to make an imbalanced experience. I want to make a balanced experience. What they did is an imbalanced experience. Heavily imbalanced. Um, Alright, so right here, I've been keeping track of armor models a lot, looking at ammo rack locations, everything else. And right here, I know where to aim on the M103 to be able to consistently hit that ammo rack. And there we go. Third shell, we reset his ammo rack again after he already used a repair kit to fix it. So, he's now out of the battle for 30, well, 60 seconds because we planned out those shots. Looking at the frontal armor, um, taking a look at where I got pinned, and I was showing off just a second ago that that spot should be impinnable, but keep in mind if there's enough heat penetration, they will go through. But uh, so far the Progetto 66, I know I want to rant about some other tanks, but it's kind of needed. Um, Progetto 66, out of the entire lineup, this, in my opinion, is definitely the go-to tank, just because of the way it feels and how it performs. Uh, the Tier 10 is not too bad. The Tier 10 is technically an upgrade to this tank, but it does kind of feel like the Tier 10's turret armor does start to dwindle compared to the Tier 9, uh, in all honesty. And then the Tier 8, its reload time compared to its alpha, it is definitely on the lower side. So the Tier 9 is kind of like that balance point between armor, mobility, and damage. Uh, the Tier 10, it focuses a little bit more on damage and accuracy while the tier 9 is just that kind of perfect middle point between all three tanks. And here I am waiting for the shell to load and never being able to take a shot inside the Fosh. I should have fired rather than waiting on the reload because uh, that opportunity has now left. But so far, Progeno 66, I, I, I am definitely looking forward to playing this one as well as the tier 8 with the most recent rework, and I'm going to be putting in quite a few matches inside these Italian tanks coming up the next couple of days. Just because this Tier 9, it, it feels like you can do so much more inside this tank than the Tier 10 and the Tier 8, by the way it's put together. It does have a little bit of a lower profile compared to the Tier 10 as well, I do believe, which does give it a little bit more of an advantage, and um, not having that really weird-shaped um, turret with the gun that kind of forces you to uh, consistently fight haul down and the 120 millimeter weak spot on top of the gun as well and giant viewports that ha have essentially no armor and count as a part of the tank rather than spaced armor on the tier 10. Um, yeah, ouch. But so far, with the way that the armor is put together in the Progetto 66, it, it's not going to be like the win all scenario tank. This tank. It, it still relies on the mid-range combat to long-range combat. You can get close as long as you have a wall to hug, or you're basically just playing peekaboo and you have a few spots to hit and hold. And this match, um, kind of getting stuck, you know, telling Blade, hey, maybe you should fall back and let me and Puddle kind of push up to this corner here and see what we can do. 
and I kind of felt like our Super Conk and 4005 are pushed up way too far. This is team destruction. The team focus is back on the hill where we have the advantage. Um, we have the uh, the 120, which has uh, 8 degrees or 9 degrees of gun depression. With the Progetto 66, has 9 degrees of gun depression. We have the Super Conk with 10 degrees of gun depression. The 4005 with 10 degrees of gun depression. And we also still have two artilleries for support. Yet, if you look at the map, the Super Conk and the 4005 are sitting in locations that are completely exposed and in the open rather than utilizing their gun depression. So, that's something I just want to throw out there. It's not like I'm going to be calling out these players and saying, hey, you played this wrong, but, you know, mistakes happen. Mistakes happen. If these guys would have fallen back, we could have taken the... We could have gone back to our side of the spawn and locked it down. And then we could have had me and Puddle, basically me going over to A3 and Puddle sitting at B3 as well. And then having that dual line of sight and then Blade being able to sit in the back preparing to uh, come out and throw his six shot clip into somebody and then the super conk watching this back hill with 4005 support coming on top of the little uh, cliff edge in front of us and there we go the fosh 15 has been spotted along with the heavy tank honestly i'm just going to speed this up a tad bit because this goes for quite some time the super conk the 4005 die uh both artilleries are now stuck inside the back corner i'm pushing up to see what i can do over here and there we go. Hello, Progetto. They go sideways. I put one shot in, and... Lol. <laughs> I remember that. And then I remember going back to look at the damage. I actually got no damage from that, even though I put a shell in prior and watched him go into the water. I'm pretty sure if I would have put a dip shot into his track and got the track assist, I would have had that uh, assist, or maybe the damage. But since I, you know, shot the actual core of the tank just for that... 430 decent high roll. Um, yeah, it was, it was a little bit funny watching that happen. So, the heat rounds inside this tank at 303 penetration. They're not that bad. Honestly, being above 300 pin, these rounds are pretty decent. They handle quite a bit. Not much of an issue. This is going on quite the amount of time. I don't want to make this one as long. But whenever you're going over things and, you know, stating your opinion and then showing off the tank, talking about the reloads, holy crap, I am sorry, you guys. These videos are long, but it's not like I'm going to try and shove this all into a short little 10 minute clip reading them and not explaining, you know, the difference that it's having on the tanks and the effect. But I've probably only put maybe seven matches in each one of these tanks in the past couple days. So I, I, I did play them prior before, um, you know, the, the buffs, and I can tell you now, I was not that impressed with uh, how they were put together. Honestly, I probably could have stayed right there and got one more shot in, which, um, coming with the end result, I probably should have stayed there and put one more shot in. But it's down to a two versus six, and yeah, just, you know, a little bit that can be happening. Now, you know, so far, I would say definitely, without a shadow of a doubt, the tier 9 is my favorite out of the entire line. The Rosarante, it's decent. It, you know, it's it's actually up inside that competitive aspect of the game and can handle it a little bit. But primarily, it is still... Uh, it, it's lacking in a few areas. Not gun-wise, armor-wise. I would say the armor is lacking a tad bit. And there we go. We're going to put a heat round through the top plate of the E50M and take a shell from him as well. You know, as I said, this is not a brawling tank. But whenever you're hauled down, this armor is absolutely amazing. Uh, there we go, blocking a lot of heat rounds. We're going to put one shell into the Fosh. We're going to back off, start our reload, or maybe try to start our reload, get a little bit aggressive here. Here we go. I probably should have waited for that shell to fully load in all honesty, but taking down the Fosh, in my opinion, was really important. Uh, honestly, um... If Puddle would have stayed behind and tried to lock down those two tanks rather than pulling out the way he did, uh, this would have been a big, different scenario, and we probably actually could have brought this back. But, you know, Puddle, he's not used to playing with a platoon, and me, um, I need to be a little bit more specific, so as time goes on, Puddle's going to improve, and I'm really looking forward to playing with him a lot more and helping him improve as much as he can. But even on the losing team, still placing in second place. Now... The main reason why I love this recording is because 
I also got enough experience on the losing team to get an Ace Tanker Mastery Batch on the losing team for 1,122. So currently, even with the most recent buff to the tank, it is still not performing as good as it should be because its experience requirements are still extremely low. So, yeah. I mean, give it some time. This thing might start to jump up again. But other than that, you guys, this is turning out to be really long. You guys have a fantastic day, night, afternoon, whatever time it is for you, and I'll catch you guys all later. Other than that, leave a like, comment, subscribe, and I'm going to dip. You guys have a blast. This is a lot longer than I want it to be. Holy crap, 35 minutes. Oh.